It's that blood that will never lose its power. He deserves the glory tonight in the house. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise the Lord tonight. Amen. He's in the house. We Amen. give him glory. Hallelujah. We're going to give God praise in just a second. We encourage you to stay tuned for a message from Pastor Gary Cross coming up here real soon. But as we were saying just now, let's praise the Lord and thank him for his blood because it's that blood that's given us the victory tonight. Amen, sister. Let's worship. Hallelujah. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, there's wonder working power in the blood. Jesus for that blood. Hallelujah. Would you be free from your passion and pride? Power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleanse into Calvary's time. Wonderful power in the blood. Power, power, wonder working power. serve you, Lord Jesus. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus, we celebrate you, Lord, and what you've done and what you're Hallelujah. doing in this place through your blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord, we want to praise you for it. We praise you, Lord, tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just live our hands for heaven. Just pray.
hearts are everything to you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. the victory. It's all in you, Jesus. We praise you for it, Lord. Have all of us, dear God. Oh, we don't want to hold anything back tonight, Lord Jesus. We'll let you take it all. Bless you, Lord. For those on the internet, dear Lord, that they don't hold anything back, but give you glory. Oh, let that praise well up in them and give you blessing, dear God. Oh, Lord, may we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness tonight, that we lay that heaviness down and give you praise. Worthy are you, Jesus. Worthy is his name. Bless his name. Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We give you the glory and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo, he is worthy tonight. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you. He's so good. And you know, we don't have to praise him just here. Oh, we have the privilege to praise you anywhere, Lord. And I just want to say thank you for that, dear God. Through everything, Lord, may we give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, worship. Thank you so much, Brother Woody and Sister Tracy. For those on the Internet, we love you that watch us. Sister Alicia, if you're watching tonight, I know you'd requested that song, and we love you. And Sister Opal, and we know several others, watch. You're on here for a reason. Amen. Hang in. There's a good word. We believe a good word through our brothers coming tonight. And we'll speak to you. We just want to share a few announcements with us. We praise the Lord for our folks here. And we do share just a little bit about what's going on in the uh, church. Uh, we did, um, uh, we'll throw the, the announcements up and we'll, yeah, we do have a, some, some special speakers coming for us. Uh, we did mention about our brother Al. He'll share with us. Brother, if you're watching, we love you. I'm praying for you. Uh, he'll share with us when he's able. And we'll have our uh, special speaker come in a week and a half. His name is Alex. We've announced him for a little while now. Hope you can be here, tune in with us uh, Sunday, a week and a half from now. I guess that's the 25th. We do remind us, discipleship, September the 13th. That'll be coming up before you know it. And y'all are studying... Second Timothy, amen, amen, good stuff, I hope, hope folks can be there, and uh, Brother Woody's working on this, we talked about it this week, the Hope Fest over here in Auburn is going to be next Saturday, and I believe there's going to be some participation from the, the some of the, the singing in the church, yeah, the singing in the church, I don't know what, do you know what time it is, brother, by chance, it's Saturday evening, I think, isn't it, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So that's coming up and um, be good stuff ahead. We do remind of the ladies meeting. I believe that's the 30th of August. We put that out there. What's that? <laughs> we have, Brother Gary's mentioned we have a lot of ladies here tonight. And we're, th we're, we're thankful. <laughs> Very thankful. Uh, we did mention for us the uh, tent revival. We're praying about that. Um, we have some 
thoughts on that. We'll see where the Lord takes us, but that is as a reminder that the first night of that is what we have up there September the 20th. God's got good things for us. I believe he has reviving for us, and I believe he has us to take it and, and to minister to those that he puts in our path for those that need Jesus. You know, we're going to see that revival spread to, spread on out. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Oh. And, and it's the 23rd. He's got to be in Nashville, too. Yeah. So on the 24th, he's not just forgotten. I said, I don't know if he's forgotten. Oh. He's had a major eye surgery on the 22nd. Okay. okay. He forgot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll let him know about... We'll let we'll let the sister know there's our you know sister Elena our contact and and we'll we'll work on it but so but brother we believe for a good good report on this surgery next weekend we believe it's going to be good it's going to be good all right and if nothing else Pastor Gary appreciate him and God's got a word to speak to us tonight appreciate him and Sister Ruth so much and we're believing for good things he's been. He and the sister have been continuing to pray for the church and believe in good things, just as Nehemiah did. God bless you, brother. Stop here a little bit and pray. We're going we're gonna to lift up the name of the Lord, whether the devil likes it or not. There is a new song out by John Rich, and it has a video that goes with it. If you haven't seen it, you need to get on YouTube and find it. It is, uh, the name of it is Revelation. And it's out of the book, of, the song is written out of the, uh, written and links up to uh, uh, I, I let, Revelation 20, I think that was tw chapter 20. And he talks about the Lord coming and uh, the king's coming like a train and, and it, it, it's, the melody's good, the, the music's good and the, the video is, is riveting. Uh, it's really good. If you got a chance, you need to, Oh, it, it is, it's really, really good. And uh, the thing of it is, it's, it's being, uh, it is number one in all genres of music. All genres. It's far above the, the filthy rap and, and some of the other junk out there. And it, it is it's stirring people up. And uh, we, we watch uh, YouTube a lot. And... Uh, we, we're catching people, these uh, podcasters, they're talking about, about it and, and they're stunned and they're, oh my, I, I, and they're stunned about what he, he's re relating out of the book of Revelation because most of these people never read Revelation. They had no idea what's fixing to come. And um, it is stirring the, stirring the world up. And I tell you what, people, uh, look around you. This thing is already starting. We've done got our feet in in the in the the last days of the thing that's going on. Christ ain't too far from coming back. I mean, he's he's packing his bags and getting ready to come back. Now we need to get ourselves ready. We need to get our mind and our heart and our soul ready for for what he's fixing. He's coming back for a, a church. He's coming back for a bride, spotless bride. And there's going there are going to be people that's going to be sitting in church and wonder what happened because they've been in church all their life and don't know Jesus all their life. Y'all know this. You might as well say amen. You don't tell the truth. People are going to be sitting in, in the church and, the, and, and Christ is going to take the church out, the true church, and there's going to be people sitting in the church wondering what happened. There's going to be preachers behind the altar that's going to be wondering what happened. And it's just... I, I read a, a statistic, and this has nothing to do with what I'm going to say. I read a statistic that 72% of the pastors in Denver, Colorado, don't believe in God. Now, think about that. It, to them, th this is just a, a job. It's just a check every week, and that's all it is. They don't believe nothing about it. It's just a job. 
and they, they, Christ is going to come back and people in his church, the true believers in his church are going to be gone and he's going to be standing there thinking, what happened? Anyway, that's, that's I'm sorry, I, I got off on a tangent and I'll get off my soapbox and uh, get, get into it. Welcome to church on Wednesday. We, we thank you everyone for being here. Thank you on, on the internet for being with us. Uh, we want to just rejoice in the Lord for he is worthy. Amen. Glory to God, he's worthy. And we, we want to magnify the name of Jesus because there is no other name. There is no other name. And we praise him. I want to get into, uh, into this and go into, the, into Isaiah 64, uh, verse 7. And go there with me, please, if you don't mind. Stand with me as we read the word of God. This word is worthy. It's worthy for us to stand for it. Reading, there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. Father, we exalt you, praise you, and give you glory. Thank you for your blessing. Now, Father God, we ask, manifest yourself here today, Father. Manifest yourself in wisdom and understanding. Manifest yourself, Father God, that we may have ears to ear, hear and eyes to see, that we may glorify you in all things. We praise you and give you glory for it, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever went to the refrigerator looking for something to eat? You don't know what you want, but you know that it's in there. And you open up the door and you just stand there and stare. I used to do that as a kid. My mom would holler and scream, shut that door. Anyway, but, but now I still do it, but now it's me hollering at myself. But you, you go to the refrigerator and you just stand there and stare because you, there's, a hunger, you, there's a hunger, but you don't know what it is you want. Yeah. And so you look at all, you move stuff around, you try to look in there, and you, you, you no, it ain't, no. And then you pick up that piece of aluminum, no, that's the mystery meat. I, I don't know, think I want that. And you look around and you realize, no, there's nothing in there. There's nothing in there that's going to, it's nothing that is going to satisfy that hunger on the inside. So I go to the pantry and I go and I look at the pantry. Now, one side of our pantry has got just junk, you know, canned food, stuff like that. That's just junk stuff. But over here on this side, we got the cookies and the candies and the good stuff on this side. And, and I, I, I go rambling through there, and I pick up the chips. No, it ain't that. And, and I pick up the cookies. It's been there like six months. But we, we don't eat cookies that much. But we got a bag of cookies. Ruth keeps them in Ziploc bags. Now, look, nah, if I get this out, I had to get milk, too. No, nah, nah, I don't want it. So I put them back. And I look around, and, and I just, you know, I just don't find that, that thing that, I'm, that, that my body is hungering for. I just, I just hungry. Now, I want to tell you, I love chocolate. You do too, don't you? You know you do. I, I love chocolate. And, and, and since my heart, open heart surgery, I love chocolate more than anything in the world. I could eat chocolate all the time. I have to make myself quit eating chocolate because if I didn't, I'd be as big as a house. I couldn't get through that double door. But, but I, I have to stop eating the chocolate. So I'll go to the pantry because Ruth's always got chocolate. She says she buys it for the grandkids, but I know she really buys it for me. I know you do. And, and so I'll get me a piece of chocolate, and I'll say to myself, this is what I wanted all the time. And, and I'll eat that chocolate and walk away. And, and the hunger is still there because it's not satisfied. That, that piece of chocolate wasn't, wasn't what satisfied. And then I, I realized that it's, it's not the body that's hungry. It's the spirit man that's hungry. That my, my spirit man is hungry for something that, that I need to get satisfied inside of me because I, I, I'm hungry for the, the relationship that I had with God at one time. And I'm hungry to get back to that place where I was. And, and so I, I, I try to satisfy it with food. And, and then the realization is I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry for that relationship that I had with him. And, and, and so I, I start meditating on it. And then I, and I truly realize that what I really need is my prayer life fixed. Because my prayer life is, is not where it needs to be. It's not where I, I really need to be. I, I, I pray, but I pray benign prayers. Y'all know what a benign prayer is? A benign, I'm going to read it for you. 
Because I looked up the de definition of benign, and I've added it to this. It's going. Let's do it. Do you know what about? I just said it. Benign prayer is that gentle and kindly, not harmful in effect. It's gently gentle and kindly, not harmful in effect. In other words, a prayer that changes nothing. You pray, but it changes absolutely nothing. There's no power in it. There's no substance to it. There's no, there's no power in the prayer. It is a benign prayer. It, it, it does nothing. Now, I know that, that in our piety, we always quote the, the, the old, the old uh, 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 well, now it's a religious cliche, is prayer changes things. That's true. And it's not true. It, 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 it's a true, but it's, it's also not true. Look with me with John 5, 16. Brother, I pray that I got these in there right. I, I forgot my glasses. I, I, I did it with one eye open. I don't know if I got them in there. Uh, John 5, 16, he says, Confess your trespasses one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. That the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, if you're praying an effective, fervent prayer and you're righteous, then it's going to avail much. That's a prayer that works. Now, I'm going to show you something. Here, here is the Greek word. is energio. Energio uh, is translated effective. And it means to put forth power. Now, I'm going to read this. This is out of, out of Vine's Concordance. This is not my words. Lord knows I wish it was, but I'm going to be honest. It's not my words. Uh, James, in James, the meaning may be in its inner working, in the effect produced in the praying man, bringing him into line with the will of God. That's what effectual, effectual means. Now think about this for a minute. The effect produced in the praying man, you, you, Bringing him into line with the will of God. Amen. So we can read that this way. Uh, the, effect, the effect to the pray, your praying will bring you into the line, of, into the line of, of, uh, with God's will, fervent prayer of the righteous man. Let me go on. Fervent. It, zeal, it means to be hot, to boil, zeal. It literally means he prayed with prayer. Y'all need to write this stuff down. You're going to have to meditate on this a minute. It means he prayed with prayer. And avail literally means uh, to have, to exercise force or to be effective. It, 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 is, it is amazing. We, we won't talk about that that uh, uh, prayer changes things. Listen, effective, fervent prayer changes things. Amen. It has, it avails much. It causes, it affects everything that you pray for. Amen. But it's that effective, fervent, fervency that changes things. The, uh, let me read it. It is effective, fervent prayer. This type of prayer that brings you and me into line with the will of God because we prayed the prayer. It, we prayed the prayer. So when we pray a benign prayer, first of all, we're not in the, in the will of God. And it, it is not effectual. It's not having any force. It has no power. It has no authority. It has nothing in it. It's benign. It's kindly and it's, it is uh, 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 ineffective. It's what it does. It, it just, it's, it, it's in, ineffective. And most of the time when we pray, we're praying with a backup. Right back here, we got a backup plan. Right back here, whether you want to admit it or not, you got a backup plan. Lord, you got to help me. I'm, I'm in a financial bind. Lord, please, you, I, need, I need to help. Lord, I, I please help me. But if you don't, I can get it out of my 401K. I can draw it out of my 401K. So we have a backup plan. Lord, we, we, we need rain. Lord, the, the land is dry. The crops are drying up. Lord, we need we need rain so bad, so bad here. Lord, will you bring the rain? 
but if you don't, I'll water the grass, I'll save the grass, and I'll water the garden so it'll save the tomatoes. Uh, so if you don't, that's only, I, I, I can handle it. We, we can water these things. See, we, we go into prayer with a backup plan. That's not a fervent prayer. That's not an effective, fervent prayer, and it will avail us nothing because it's a benign prayer. It, 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 means, in, it means nothing. Now, the Jews, uh, the Jews teach us different. Uh, our rabbis teach us this. To really pray, one must be completely here. Think about it. I'll, I'll wait a minute. To pray, one must be completely, I said here, there. Uh, to pray, one must be completely there. When you pray and you've got something going on in the back of your mind like a, like a, 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 a plan B, or you're worried about your grandkids, you're worried about, your, uh, about the house, no, you're worried about the water bill, you're worried about the grass dying or your, your, your garden drying up, you're worrying about your business tomorrow, what's going to happen, you're worried about the traffic outside, you're worrying about the car, you're worrying about this thing, and all this stuff is running through your mind, you're not completely there. You've got to be completely there to pray a fervent prayer. If you don't pray, if you're not completely praying, and, that, and let me tell you something, you, you've, got to, you've got to have all of this stuff set aside, and that's hard to do. Now, for me, I get down, and I go to pray, and I, I, get, in, I get myself into prayer, and I, I go thinking, you know, if I'd have done this, I could have I made this cheaper if, I, if I'd have done it. No, if I'd done it this way, and before I know it, I'm not, I'm not praying anymore. I'm building something. I'm, I'm, I'm building something or trying to figure out some way of talking to Ruth and let me buy a tool that I think I need. It, 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 I'm, not, I'm not any longer uh, there. I'm somewhere else. Now, y'all can shake your heads. I know every one of you have been there. You do the same thing I do. You don't, don't, you, don't, you too. Don't you shake your head thinking, you're, I, no, y'all don't, you're with me too. I know you are. But you, 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 have to, you have to be there to pray a fervent prayer. You have to be there. Now, when we read in the scripture, we, scripture, we see that, that Israel had to be in, in terrible adversities for, for them to get in the position to be there. They had, they had to, the, the, their world had to be tore down. Their world had to come to almost to an end before they would get there so that they could truly touch God with their prayers. L look what it says in the Exodus 2, 23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out. And their cry came up to God because of their bondage. They, they finally got there when they, their bondage had lasted for hundreds of years. They finally got to the place that the weight of the bondage, the weight of their toils and their troubles, the weight of the foot of, of uh, Pharaoh on their back, it, it got to the point that they started to groan and cry out to God. Look what he said. The word groan, and I'm not going to try it in the, in the Hebrew, it means to sigh, to groan in pain or grief, to grasp or moan. It probably sounds like me when I try to get out, in the, out of the bed in the morning, that, that, that painful groan. It, oh, Lord, Lord, you got to help us. The bondage is too great. And they cried aloud. They cried with a, a loud voice. And, and the word cry is to cry out for help, to shriek from anguish or danger. Now think, think, about, think about the time when somebody jumped out and, and, and scared you and you thought you were, you were a dead man. You, you thought you were you're just dead. And you screamed, at, and, and the men squealed like little girls. And, and, and that, that's the kind of squeal we're talking about. That's the kind of uh, uh, shriek that we're talking about. Is that, that thing that's uncontrollable that comes from, from inside and comes out. It's that terror that comes up. And God says, when you get like that, you're there. You get, when you get like that, you're there. It, it's, it, it's only in that time, in, in that adversities, that God finally got Israel to be completely there. Without that, they were never, never there. They were always moaning, groaning, griping, complaining, but they never were there to do a complete prayer. 
They were not praying a fervent prayer to be there for that prayer. Y'all shaking your head like Methodists. Are you, are you with me? Y'all giving me that Methodist amen. Let me, let me hear you. We're Pentecostal. You're supposed to hear say something. Y'all with me? Stay with me. Say it. In Isaiah 60, uh, 46, 64, 7, it says, And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up. Look at that, look at that word. Who stirs himself up. It literally means to wake up. It literally means to, to wake themselves up. They were slumbering and they were sleeping in their complacency and they, they were in a place that they, they wouldn't even wake up enough to get a hold of God. And look what it says. Who stirs himself up to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. They, they, were, they were in a place that, that they wasn't there. They, they, they were in anguish. They were in, in trials and tribulations. But they hadn't got to the place that they were willing to cry out and to moan out and, and to screech out saying, God help us, because they weren't completely there yet. They were not completely in that place to do that. And I'm going to tell you something. America is asleep. We are in a spiritual sleep. Now, I said this in here before, and, and y'all going to say you, you've heard this before. Uh, there were... a uh, a couple, a married couple came in, uh, moved back to Kentucky from a nation that Christianity was outlawed. For them to be there and to preach the gospel was a death sentence on them. And they moved back to Kentucky. Uh, they moved back here just to, because they felt like they, they couldn't stay there any longer. And they, stayed, they were here less than a year. Uh, I, eight months, I think they were here, and, and my, he, they, they were talking to my, my uh, youngest son, and they said, we're moving back to that country. We're moving back. He said, oh, you've been called back to mention? No, we're moving back there. So why are you moving? He, and she said, because America is being sung to sleep with an evil lullaby. We're, we're listening to demons and we're listening to, to stuff and we're being sung to sleep with an with a evil lullaby and we don't even realize that we are asleep. We're so asleep that we, get, we can't stir ourselves to touch God. So therefore, we, sing, we, we speak benign pr uh, praise. We, we, we speak and, and, and say benign prayers to the Lord. And all the time, the Holy Spirit is trying to wake us up. He's trying to, to get us and grab a hold of us. Wake up! It's time for you to get a hold of God. It's time for you to get, get a hold of God. Stop your benign prayers and get fervent in your prayers. Be, be effective, fervent prayers so that you can get a hold of God. But we're so asleep. We're so such a, a, a asleep in our, in our spirit man that we can't touch him, that we don't see him, we don't touch him. Look what it says in Zephaniah 1.6. Those who have turned back turned back from following the Lord and have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Now, the implication of this verse is that if we don't seek the Lord with more than benign prayers, we, will, we have not stirred up ourselves to call upon him that we may have turned our backs on the Lord. We might not have realized it, but we, turned, we may have turned our backs on God because we've not stirred ourselves up. We have not uh, reached out to God, and our prayers are so benign and so, uh, so neutral that we're not, we're not touching, we're not changing anything. Now, prayers change things? Yes, they do. Benign prayers, they don't change nothing. And you'd be surprised how many benign prayers I have prayed because because. Spiritually, I've been asleep, and, and, and God is in the last in the last month or two. God has truly waked me up. That we've been praying for this church, and, and it's time for us to pray now. And uh, we, we, we will do that here in a, in a little bit. We, we we've been praying for this church, and in doing so, uh, it has truly brought awakening in my spirit. And, and I realize that what I've been praying is just benign kind and gentle prayers that means nothing, that have no effect. But we need to do something more than that. We need to truly cry out to God. Look what it says in Psalms 53, 4. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who ate up my people as they were bred and do not call upon God? When, when, when would we wake up 
and, and see that the, that the Spirit of God is calling us, get hungry for God. That's what it's saying, is get hungry for God. Because the people that, that are working in iniquity, they don't know. They don't care. But, but the Christian people have been sung into this, this evil lullaby that we don't realize how asleep we truly are. We're hypnotized, I, I, we, I might be able to say. Uh, we got our eyes open. We're sleepwalking in the spirit. Amen. We're just sleepwalking in the spirit. And if we truly want to make uh, differences in, in our lives, differences in the, or make changes in the people that we're praying for, make ch changes, differences in the, the lost in our life, if we truly won't make differences in them, we need to start praying ferv effective, fervent prayers. We need to start crying out from in, from in us. Don't, don't go to prayer with a backup plan. Don't go into prayer thinking, well, I, 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 if God don't do this, then I'll be able to do that. Don't, don't do that. You go in there and, and have a, a fervent, uh, effective, fervent prayer prepared and then cry out to God with this effective, fervent prayer. Look what it says. I'm, I'm going to read this. Now, brother... I thought the Lord was coming back. Uh, brother, I'm going to read these, and, and then I'm going I'm, I'm to read them all at one time, so don't try to keep up with me the second time. In, in Psalms 91.15, it says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. In Isaiah 65.24, it says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, I will hear. In Luke 11, 11, 9, it says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find, or you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. First John 5, 14, it says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Now, now listen, listen to these uh, uh, four, four or five verses. To, uh, listen to these five, four verses. Psalm 90, I'm going to start with 91, and I'm going to read it. Don't try to keep up with me. I don't think you're going to be able to. Uh, Psalms 91, 15. And I'm not going to read the, the name or the, the, the verse or anything, so y'all just hang on to it. Uh, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God continues this and says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and I will say, uh, and I will, while they are speaking, I will hear and, and then Jesus said, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and you will answer. And John continues this and says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Throughout the scriptures, we, we have one, two, three, four, we've got four verses in four different books, and every one of them tie into one another. And every one of them said, if you will seek me, if you will listen to me, and if you will continue in prayer, in fervent prayer, I'll give you anything you ask. I'll do anything that you ask. Why? Because the, the effective prayer will line us up with the will of God. The fervency will give us the power to do it. And the, and the, uh, the effectiveness will give us the, the, the authority, the effect to, to bring it to pass. These things will line us up with the will of God. And we will be prepared to do anything that, that, he, that, that he asks of us. And he will, ask, he will do anything that we ask of him. He said it in his word. And let me tell you something. When you're praying and you want, to, you want God to take notice, Tell him what he prayed, what he said to you. Lord, you said this. You said that, that you, that you uh, answer me before I, before I, before I ask. You said. You, you speak it back to him. Pray what he said to you. He can't deny what he said. But when you start praying a benign prayer that doesn't mean nothing to him, he just says, I don't understand what you're talking about. You're doing a word salad. Just a word salad. It doesn't mean anything. Now, do you want to know? Uh, you know how to. Do you want to know how to pray according to His will, with an effective, fervent prayer, which produces produced in a praying man, bringing in him into line with the will of God. You want to, know how to do that? You set a, set aside a time that that. Things won't draw you away. Your mind set a set of time. Okay, I'm gonna pray at this time 
every day. And I'm going I'm to get to a place that nothing is going to draw my attention. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to set myself down, and I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray. Jesus gives us an example. You want to do it? Do it like Jesus did. Mark 1, 1, 135. Mark 1, 35. I'll get it. Here's what. Was. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. He went to a place that he could be alone. He went to a place early enough that the day's distractions wouldn't be there. He went to a place that, that the, the business of the day was far from him, and he was preparing himself to meet what was coming. And to do that, he had to go somewhere in a solitary place early in the morning. Now, you don't have to do it early. If you're not a morning person or, or you got things, do it at night. Do it before you go to bed. Just as just long as you get away from, what you're, from everything, get away from the TV, get away from everything, get to a solitary place, and don't get comfortable because if you get comfortable at the end of the night, you're going to go sleep. You don't get comfortable. Go to a place and, and, and you stand up and you walk and you, and you talk to the Lord. You tell him and then you pray. And you start praying. Let me tell you something. It won't be long. You'll be praying a fervent prayer, effective, fervent prayer, because you're getting into, into the position, into that place, and you're getting your pers you're getting that, that uh, 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 imminency with God, and, and you, you, you'll, you, you and him will have such an intimate relationship, you'll know what he wants. You'll have an intimate relationship, and he'll talk back to you and tell you what he wants from you. And as you pray, pray his word back to him, he'll say, yes, I know, I understand. Now, he knows his word. You don't have to, you know, I'm trying to remind him. He wants to know, do you know what he says? So you have to pray his word back to him. Now, you don't do, you don't do this if you're going to sit in front of the TV, laying in bed, saying, I'm going to lay right here and, and, and just pray to the Lord. No, about three, four minutes into it, you're dead asleep, and it'll be 7 o'clock in the morning before you finish your prayer. I, I, I know how it goes. But if you're up, you up, get on your feet. If you're going to do it at night, if you're going, if you're going to do it uh, late at night, and most of you, because you're workers and this, that, and other, you're going to have to do it at night. Get up. Go somewhere. Go on the back porch. Go out in the yard. Go to the garage. Go uh, in the basement if you got one. Go wherever you, wherever you huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David, David Wilkerson, everybody know who David Wilkerson is? David Wilkerson was a, uh, was a preacher prophet. Uh, he was uh, the uh, pastor to the gangs in New York. Uh, 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 Crossing the Switchblade, uh, he wrote that book. Uh, yeah, Nicky Cruz, uh, Nicky Cruz, uh, he was the, uh, the killer of the Mau Mau Maus in New York, and he got saved under David Wilkerson. Uh, when he went to New York, and he, him, he brought his family there uh, in one of those small apartments in, in New York City, for him to get away and, and to pray, he would get up early in the mornings before daylight. He would get, a, get completely dressed in the clothes he's going to wear the rest of the day, socks, shoes, the whole nine hours, and then he would get in the bathtub. He would sit in the bathtub and pray because that was the place he could get, get away from everything. You can lock the door. You're in there by yourself, and he, he would sit in the bathtub. Anybody ever sat in the bathtub for a long period of time? Brother, that ain't nothing no more uncomfortable than that. Cold bathtub porcelain, that, that no. But he would, he would go there and pray. Now, you don't, have to, you don't have to go to the bathtub. You can go out on your back porch. You go out in, on the patio, wherever it is, and, and just talk to the Lord and, and talk to him like he's your best friend. And when you talk to him, Tell him what he said. And if you don't know what he said, if you don't know what the book says about you, then you can't tell him what he said about you so that you can't say, Lord, you said. Now, don't, don't try this on something you heard some preacher say one time because the preacher might have lied to you and, and because he didn't know, and you'd be telling him a lie, and he said, I don't know what you're talking about. 
But you read your word, read this, and, and quote back to him what he said to you so that when, he, when you're talking to him, he can say, I understand who you are. And, and then the, the intimacy starts over time. It's not going to happen that first time. It might not happen the first six times. It might not happen the first six months. It might not happen the first year. But in your continuous in this, when you start this, don't stop it. It, it gets to, to the point of, I got to get up. I got to go out there. <clears throat> I've got to get this. I can't go to bed before I pray. I can't go to the sleep unless I talk to the Lord. I got to get this done. Now, if you want that, if you want that, you have got to dedicate yourself to this. You've got to dedicate dedicate yourself to, to go to that solitary place and to pray and to pray to Him. And, and let me tell you, the effective fervency of your prayers will come. And then, and then because you have prayed the prayer, and you have. Gotten into, you have gotten into the will of God because of the effectiency of it, then the, the, the uh, avail ability about it that will cause your, pra your prayers to come to, a, come to a, a, a conclusion because God says, now you have power. I'm giving you the power because you realize who you are in me. Amen. Now, now, one, amen. why ain't y'all dancing? This is good stuff. But I, I, we, we need to understand, uh, first of all, we're asleep. We're spiritually asleep. We have been spiritually hypnotized by the junk around us, by, by, the, by the complacency of the world and complacency of the church. We've been hypnotized. And we need to come out of that, we come out of that and realize that God is calling us back to a place of prayer. He's calling us to, to a place and a time that we need to pray to him, to pray, and, and to pray a fervent prayer. These benign prayers is getting us nowhere. The benign prayers are not accomplishing anything. The benign prayers is, is get us where we're still broke down in our backs, broke down in our uh, shoulders and our hips. Our benign prayers is get us where we, we can't walk around, we can't do anything. The benign prayers is not, not fulfilling anything in us. And I'm telling you something, we want to blame it on him. We want to blame this on him. The, the, this whole thing of, of I prayed and God didn't do it. Well, God don't want to do God don't want to heal me. That's junk. That's a part of that lie that the world is telling us. That's part of that lie that religion is telling us that God don't do that no more. That's a lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he done it then, he does it today. If he didn't do it today, then he's a liar. He's a liar. He does it today, but the problem is we don't line up with his will. We don't line up with what he says, and because of that, we're broke down, we're, we're busted, we're broke, and we're sick, and, and we walk around in a, in a hypnotic daze, and we don't know where we're at. Boy, y'all ought to just, everybody ought to be at the altar right now. And we, we, need, we need to get to that place. We need to get to that place. That we set aside a time, set aside a place, and don't take your wife out there. Don't take your ki grandkids out there. All of us are grandparents. Uh, don't take your, your grandkids out there with you. You go out there by yourself. You, you get your Bible, or you go out there by yourself and just sit down and talk to the Lord. Amen. Just talk to the Lord. And, and talk to him like he's your best friend, because he is. And talk to him like he's sitting right next to you, because he is. I've told this in here before, and I'll tell it again. The, the uh, rabbis teach that God literally walks the earth between 3 and 6 in the morning. He literally walks the earth between 3 and 6 in the morning. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How many here has ever been in, uh, dead asleep between somewhere between 3 and 5 in the morning and just wake up for no reason, just, man, I need to get back to sleep? Has anybody ever done that? Everybody in here has done that. You know why? Because God coming up at, at about 3 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, you say, will you wake up? Will you spend a little time with me? Would you get up and spend a little time with me? And what do we do? i got to go to sleep. i got to get up. And we roll over and pay him no attention because we won't wake up enough to reach up and get a hold of him when he's right in our presence. We're too sleepy and we're too, we're too worried about, about an hour's sleep when he's saying, will you get up and spend a little time with me? Will you just spend a little time with me this morning? And if we get up and go to that solitary place 
and we sit down and just talk to him like he's our best bud. And tell him, first thing, you know what I, what I do is I start calling him by name. Father, you are Rapha, my healer. You are Jireh, my provider. You are, and, and just go through the, through the line of what the Bible said, who he is. Just call him by name. Let me tell you something. That thing that's inside of you, that, that spirit that dwells within inside of you, it's going to jump up and say, oh, you're talking about my daddy. You're talking about my daddy. And it's going to, it's going to get you alive. It's going to wake you up on the inside. And, hey, that's where we need to be. And start calling him by name. You're Jireh. You're Rapha, you're Shama, you're, you're my Shalom, you're my Roha, you're my Tishkanu, you are you're all that I am that I need in this life, and start calling him what he is. To, that you're you're the 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 Shekana of all that I have. See, we we need to do that, and because that it it caused something to stir on the inside, and then you can start talking to him. Lord, there, there, I've got problems in my life. You know the things that's going on in my life. You know about this and you know about that. And now that I've brought it to, to, brought it to you, I know that, that you have taken these things and, and I don't have to worry about these things anymore. And because I brought them to you and I don't have to worry about these things anymore, I can set these things aside and I can meditate on the things that's, that's worthy. That's praiseworthy, and that's Jesus. I can, I can, I can meditate on the things that, that is, is worthy for me to think, and that's all about Jesus. If I can meditate on Jesus, I won't be worried about the things I just took to the Lord, and he will meet our needs because we've taken them to him Amen. with a fervent prayer. Amen. Stand with me. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we exalt you today. We magnify you and give you glory. We thank you, Father God, that you are holy and worthy of all prayers. And Father, you are in our midst and we glorify you right here, right now. Lord, you have manifested yourself and we praise you. We thank you, Father God, for being here and we worship you truly. And Father, we ask now, if anyone here that needs to come to the altar, will you come? We will pray with you right now and we will pray a fervent, effective prayer over you in Jesus' name and we, we will expect something to happen for you on the internet. If you have some, you have a need, text us on, on the line. We will pray for you. We will lift your, your name up, and we will call Jesus upon uh, for you, and he will move for you. We know it in Jesus' name. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we exalt you, and we praise you, and we honor you for who you are. We glorify the name of Jesus, for you are worthy. Father, we thank you for it all now in Jesus' name. Let's just, let's just lift your hand up. Just worship him where you're at. Just worship him. He's worthy. Worship all, oh, Father God, we exalt you and we praise you. You are my Lord and my God. Holy is your name. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, you are worthy. Thank you, Father God. Pastor? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Let's raise up the cry to him. And on the internet... Let's do that too. Talk about those effective, fervent, availing prayers. Let's seek Him now. Glorious is Your name. Glorious to You, Lord. Hallelujah. Glorious is Your name, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Glorious, worthy. Mighty and just and true.
appreciate the word from Pastor Gary. And brother, you said we were going to pray for the church. Would you like to come back up here and do that for us here? I know you. Okay. Okay. We're going to pray for the church now and just lift up his house. Father God, we do. As our brother said, we have the privilege of praying an effective, fervent prayer tonight for this house. And we seek you, dear God, believing that, Lord, you build this house. And, Lord, the gates of hell don't prevail. That, Lord, what will come against us one way will flee seven ways, dear Lord. That, Lord, ever since faith has been heard, dear God, we intercede believing for the saints, just as they did at Ephesus. We believe for the saints here, dear God, as we make mention in prayers, dear God, that there's going to be power in this place, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power in the blood that gives us victory over all our sins, that same power, dear God, that for those who are listening to this tonight that may need you as Savior, dear God, that, Lord, we pray through the Holy Spirit's conviction now. We cry out. That, Lord, you reach them where they are tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the needs, dear God. We lay them before you, dear God. And we don't lift up our needs. We lift up Jesus tonight. And we believe tonight that we are overcomers in this place, dear God. More than conquerors through Christ Jesus, the Lord. Oh, Lord God. Oh, our testimony is a good one, dear God. Testimony of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorious are you, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, we stand and we believe. Oh, for anyone that's not where they need to be, we believe for. For anyone that needs an effective, fervent prayer in their bodies or in their minds, we stand and believe that, Lord, not fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. It is coming in the name of Jesus. The Lord, a whole body from Jehovah Rapha is coming. In Jesus' name, we celebrate this, dear God. Not for the glory of any man or woman, but for the glory of your name and the glory of your what you were building, dear God. Your building, dear God. We worship you for it. It's a good building. Thank you, Lord. We believe for this, this work here. That, Lord, this area is not going to be the same because of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. For you, Lord. For you, Lord. And as our brother said, dear God, may we always be present right there, dear God, where you are, bringing you the glory, bringing you the praise, bringing you our needs, dear Lord, because you care. You say this, Lord, cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. We thank you for that care. And you, Lord, as you also promised, you will sustain. You will hold us up with your righteous right hand. We, we remind you of your word tonight, and we remind you of that for this church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty, you reign. You reign. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We believe for some needs, some family members we're praying for in this church, that, Lord, what seemed like a mountain, dear God, shall be removed by your spirit, we pray, dear God. Through the spirit of the Lord, dear God, there's going to be some overcoming, and we stand in agreement in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got the words up there.
It was on my heart before we closed down. If there seemed like maybe there's somebody that's holding on to something that's watching now, I pray before you turn that screen off where you are, you let that go. Because as, as our brother shared tonight, he's present with us and called us to be present with him, to be there with him. Be there with him right now. And he will take that burden away. You don't have to leave with that same burden you turned this on with. Do it now in the name of Jesus. We love you. We're so glad you tuned in. We'll see you soon at Christian Life. God bless you.